A different future starts with you. That's why GoDaddy does more than help you find a name. You can create, sell, and get found online so any small business can drive change or build an empire. We need a new generation of thinking. Your way of thinking. Start different at GoDaddy.com. I quite like the circuit. I quite like the racing over here. But, well, I like the Saturday better than the Sunday this time. My name is Rishi Kapoor. Kunal Shah is actually waiting to make a point about the Austrian A1 GP, the Red Bull ring and the race that happened. I found it not so happening uh, since I'm a great fan of the circuit. I expected something better. But Kunal, was it up to your expectations? See, I know you're a Red Bull fan and I know we partnered <laughs> with Red Bull. So that's why you are not happy with the fact that at the Red Bull ring, Red Bulls only finished 10th and 11th. Okay. And it was so-called the Mercedes ring. Okay. But uh, I loved it. I loved Saturday as well. It was a case of who doesn't want pole position. What was that? I mean, one driver makes a mistake, still has provisional pole. The other driver who can take pole pushes so hard that he gives pole away. I mean, what's that? <laughs> You know, but now we know why nobody wanted the pole position. Yeah, because the pole position guy doesn't win here. (laughs) Massa was on pole last time, Nico won. Uh, Exactly. This time, Hamilton was on pole, Nico won. So, this is just funny, you know. Maybe they knew pre-race that, listen, P2 is where the victory is going to come from. (laughs) And, you know, it was the case of what we say in India, you know. Pele up, Pele up. You go first. It must have been a vastu around P2, <laughs> the, the, the great spot. <laughs> but great qualifying uh, session. Kunal likes to call it out of a Steven Spielberg movie. It was quite like the movie Speed. Yes. The, the set of the movie, of course, was some circuit called the Ostrich. I can't get the name it's right. Aus- yeah, Ostrich. Like, what was that whole Austrian name, the German pronunciation? I, I don't know. If somebody knows it, they should come Grand around. Prix, and, oh, what Grand Prix, Presser, oh, the Austri- Ostrich. I mean, Ostrich, oh, just, just Sauce. Just call it the Austrian Grand Prix, please, will you? We have enough confusion in Formula 1, enough complexity. Yeah. At least have the race names clear enough. I know, just call the race MG UK. <laughs> <or whatever. laughs> okay, uh, so as for uh, McLaren, I mean, very, very bad. Another dark day for them. I mean, uh, they, and somebody's really put this very well, that they could have actually started in front of the Mercedes cars, considering they had so many... 25 and 50 grid penalties, so they could have actually taken a round of the whole circuit. <laughs> yeah, they would have probably made use of the short lap and started ahead of pole position. But, well, I mean, I, I don't know, any darker for McLaren and I don't know what shade of black will they go into. And, you know, if you suddenly see the drivers are starting to make statements and they are feeling negative and they're irritated and if you're not fast, at least be reliable and even yeah. that's not happening. Yes, and I can tell you, Rishi, the powertrain regulations have mm. been written keeping Alonso in mind. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing, you know, how we all know that when the going gets tough, Alonso is the man to deliver. He doesn't drive, he flies. He did that yesterday. <laughs> he flew over Kimi Raikkonen. Absolutely, he did. I'm, I'm so glad both the drivers were okay because that looked a little bad. And that was scary. I mean, the engines don't work on a McLaren and, and the cameras also don't. <laughs> you know, I'm glad you brought it up because at the end of the day, we could only see Raikkonen's onboard footage. Mm-hmm. I would have loved to see... Fernando Alonso's view. Yeah. But, you know, like you said, maybe nothing works on the McLaren. <laughs> not even the onboard camera. We should give Martin Brundle the credit for this as well. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, if you look at Kimi's uh, replay, it, it really looks like something touched him from the backside. But apparently, it's not. The, yeah, he something. claims it was wheel spin. Possible. Maybe a damp patch or something he hit. And it's Kimi. You never know. He always hits something these days. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But, you know, Kunal, because you're the technical guy. And when I saw him come out of the corner. I saw him cleanly get out of the corner, come on the power and suddenly he just lost, uh, tr- I don't know, traction in the fifth gear. Yeah, he, that was that was the wheel spin. So, when you suddenly see him opposite locking yeah, while yeah, driving yeah. straight, he was pointing left. That was a wheel spin that got to him in his moment. I still can't understand how by him spinning, he actually collected Alonso the way he did. I mean, that's a little surprising. I want the onboard footage. We should start a campaign, Rishi. <laughs> Campaign. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to come back to the Grand Prix. Nico Rosberg, you really got the better of Lewis Hamilton. And and very well, he really has upped his game. And Austria seems to be like his lucky number. You know? Yeah, no, it also seems like Lewis doesn't like the circuit too much. He didn't top any session. He was surprised he was at pole as well. In the race, he didn't seem like he was... F- you know, he was quick enough to get Nico. Locks, but, four, four, all, <laughs> locks all four tra- tires all the time. Yeah, you know, I, I think it was a great race. And I think you and I should introduce a new terminology to the sport. 
called the pole vault. You mm-hmm. know, when the driver starting in P2 <laughs> has such a rocket flying start that he just zooms past P1 and that's what Nico Rosberg did. And he actually, you know, reminded me of Abu Dhabi last year when Lewis actually just like flew past him. Yes, my God. You are the Wikipedia <laughs> on the Inside Line F1 podcast. But Rishi, what is surprising to me is mm-hmm. when you look at the statistics for the year, mm-hmm. Rosberg has only one win less than Hamilton. It doesn't feel like, it feels like Hamilton has been winning for a decade now. Yeah, it seems like ha- Rosberg just can't match up to Hamilton. Correct. I mean, I don't know. I mean, but think of it. Three wins to four. Yes. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Spain was a clear victory. Austria happened by, because he was really good. And the fact that Monaco, well, the team made an error, but he still has three wins and yes. he's only six points away, if I'm not wrong. Ten points away. Ten points yeah. away. There you and go. you know what? He's come out and said that he's now found something he was trying to find in 2014. Is it? Maybe he's found the fact that he was the first driver to debut on the Inside Line F1 podcast. <laughs> we'll put a link to that. Hear him out, guys. <laughs> Two years ago, Indian Grand Prix. <laughs> uh, Hamilton's clutch issues, they pitted him a lap later actually in the race and, and everybody's tried questioning it because there's no undercut then. But what people don't realize is because there were heating issues and tyres and they couldn't get it up to grips very quickly, maybe uh, they were guarding him against uh, Nico, you know. Yeah, I possible. I mean, uh, to me... Much to ponder over, mm-hmm. especially the clutch issue and the fact that he's spoken about the strategy about you know him coming in a lap later. They could have probably been more closer. Mm-hmm. But in my view, he needs to focus on why he probably got off the you know pit lane exit. Because mm-hmm. that to me was a bit of a rookie error. But you know what, Rishi? Mm-hmm. Just shows how close it actually is between them. And that when Hamilton is challenged, there is... He is error prone in some way. Because you saw Rosberg at the entry. He was all four wheels and I had a feeling, oh my God, he's either going to go to the wall. Or he's he's going to speed in the pit lane. Yeah, (laughs) and he had all four wheels locked in on entry and Hamilton did this at the exit. So, a lot of uh, tough competition between the drivers. I'm glad that's happening because otherwise Formula 1 is not in my mind. Very entertaining these days and people are making a lot of gung-ho noise about it. But, you know, this has been a great year for Mercedes. It's been a year of uh, uh, pole positions and, uh, you know, in a few, few Grand Prix time, like Kunal says, uh, he has a very keen observation that I like him to say. <laughs> They'll probably run out of team personnel to send up onto the podium to collect the trophies. <laughs> they start calling their wives and probably their kids and... Some Buaji from somewhere. They'll just tell. They'll just tell the driver. Listen, just collect both the point, <laughs> both the trophies, and get. We are tired of going all the way up there. But you know, on on the point, Rishi, we actually had a few driver errors for a change. So the pit oh, lane exit. Yes. And we had Marcus Ericsson jump starting a race. I don't know when last time there was a jump start. Maybe you'll know. You're the wiki Okay, I, I I do know there was a. Uh, 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 an Alonso error last year at Silverstone where he, he wasn't in his grid position properly. Wow. So that I remember. When Hats he off just... to you. <laughs> yes, that was there. But jump start, I've, I've, yeah. I have faint memories of truly doing it. Yeah, I remember start. back in the days of Hacker and Schumacher mm-hmm. and even Coulthard, our good friend, if you remember. <laughs> you know, there was a lot of guys you could end jump up jump starting. starting. Yes, and true that. Maybe you know where? This is where one of our listeners, Mithila Mehta, pointed out mm-hmm. that... Uh, maybe just back in the days, people were far more eager to start races than they are now. <laughs> <laughs> true that, true that. Absolutely. Hey, I'm so happy for Masa. He's on the podium and, and it's so good to see him up there. Yeah, the old man, right? Yeah, and, the old man. Yeah, I think and it was also good, him... good to see Gerard Berger out there. The grandfather. <laughs> when his stomach enters the room before he does. I mean... I'm... He's a former Formula 1 driver. Mind your words. I can tell you he was... He drove in the F1 Legends, you know, before that. I, I, I don't know how he would have fit it in the car, but let's <laughs> give it to him. <laughs> but, you know, I, I thought he was... I know I'm going to get a lot of flack for this, but I didn't enjoy the the, the podium interview so much. I thought he had nothing to ask. <laughs> we have a lot of questions and we'll mail it across to you, Gaya. Yeah, no, dude, sorry. I'm sorry. Copyrighted questions, we better be pulled up there to ask. You know, we've been doing like now 130 odd episodes and we're probably good at it. Yeah, so If Arnold Schwarzenegger yeah. can do it, we, we definitely yeah, You do. mean Austrians should do uh, podium <laughs> interviews going forward then, right? Make a mockery out of themselves. Absolutely. I'll, all right. I'll, all right. I'll be, I'll be back. I'll be back. Okay. Wheel nuts are driving Ferrari nuts. Uh, I mean, this is the second time or third time, I believe, where they've lost time in the pits. Uh, yeah. Australia, again, I, I thought Kimi Hayer had this issue. I think some, some other is. Vettel had this issue. And, and it's just, you know, they're trying to reduce the number of threads. Yes. And not finding the right thread. Like, they're it not just finding goes the right cross. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but one, one person who could have been cross mm-hmm. on the podium mm-hmm. could have been Lewis Hamilton. Ah, Imagine what would have happened if Gerard Berger would have called Lewis Nico. 
Ah, the other way around. Oh, that wouldn't have gone well. <laughs> or so we guess. Ooh. <laughs> All right. What's your lol moment, Rishi? What's your lol my moment? Lol, my lol moment is... Malinado almost got on the backside of some Toro Rosso's and Red Bulls and saved it. And I don't know how he did it. But when he doesn't crash, I don't feel normal at all. Yeah, I mean, nothing seems to go right in Formula 1, you know. <laughs> Not even Maldonado's crashes. I mean, he's managing to save those, you know. The practice makes a man, man perfect. Mithila <laughs> correctly pointed out. And, and, and who better than, and, than Pasta? Because he's like had, well... Maximum practice sessions, right? It doesn't matter whether you test on the circuit or no, but I will test the barriers. (laughs) (laughs) Whereas your front wing or mine, I will get it. (laughs) Alright, Raikkonen and Alonso, I'm I'm feeling a little bad because I'm a big big Raikkonen fan. But how he's been performing has not been up to the mark. Also, he robbed us of some great duels, okay? Had he not crashed into Alonso and we not had a safety car, uh, Nico versus Lewis was looking kick-ass. Absolutely. I really think that would have been a brilliant battle for us to see. Also, you know, he robbed us of his own uh, uh, charge coming through the field from 14th or wherever he started to. Yeah, and maybe he's robbed himself of a Ferrari contract for ah, 2016. Ah, there we go, there we go. My big but it was a strange looking crash, you know. And uh, it was always funny to see one Formula 1 car over the other. And um, I, I don't know what happened there, you know. I, I mean, I think the only thing right about the crash was that the drivers walked out scot-free. And the other good thing about the crash was it made us realize that a safety car is imperative in every race because what it does is there's no lift and coast happening because you end up saving fuel automatically. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you brought that up. Please bring in a safety car or please reduce the number of laps. Number of laps. And you know, this is something one has to realize and Kunal and I have always been uh, shouting about it that Formula 1 is not about conservation about energy it's about flat out racing yeah. we want cars to come close to each other and climb on each other not in the way that Alonso <laughs> climbed on Raikkonen but he wanted McLaren to be on top Rishi come on <laughs> top of the time sheets top of a Ferrari as well so, wait, you know, but Kunal there's a good point over here that I'm going to make if if I am Kevin Magnussen would I be glad that I'm not driving that car absolutely in fact I won't even fight for a seat in 2016 and say, please let the old drivers drive, which is Alonso and Button. Mm-hmm. And maybe Button could take, you know, voluntary retirement at the end of the season. <laughs> I anyway think Alonso's career is being destroyed here because you have the likes of Hulkenberg who are suddenly showing up saying, hey, guess what? Between Canada and Austria, I went and won the Le Mans. Nothing great. You know? ah, ah. That's quite a, quite a statement to make. Mobile One, you should reconsider naming your product as? Mobile 21. Why? Because it seems like McLaren's best starting position, right? I mean, they're always like, I, I don't know. But the, the, the even more funny part, Rishi, is that despite such a dismal performance, McLaren will still get a few tens of millions of dollars more than a couple of midfield teams put together. You know, something which is very, very unfair. And, and, you know, they say that the crisis is over and we've come up with the most positive statements. But somewhere I can see the drivers getting frustrated because, well... Your Honda, and you know how to make engines. And and I'm not gonna uh, give any concession here to the drivability of the car. The uh, the aerodynamics don't look that great either. We won't know, but yeah, I mean, and I'll repeat a tweet that I uh, that I read on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Honda, the power of farts. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the, uh, Honda says they ha- they cannot supply to a second team. Uh, but the engines, I don't think, will be so much in demand considering they can't even power a pressure cooker. <laughs> you know what, Rishi? I wouldn't even put it in our studio to fan us. It'll probably die on us on the third minute of our 15-minute long podcast. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Fine, 17. <laughs> okay, okay then. So, Red Bull Racing, I'm going to come back to 10th is, is the best they could do. Well, Danny Kvyat had some issues. Otherwise, I think he's been robbing pace out of Daniel Ricciardo. I personally feel he's giving Ricciardo a tough time, whether we see it on the charts or not. But when, you know, when you're in such dismal situation and Ferrari turns around and says, hey, hello, we have engines to give you. And you say, no, thank you so much. I mean, that's just PR, right? That's PR and maybe that is where this whole customer cars in Formula 1 situation lies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, McLaren denied themselves to have Mercedes customer engines. Mm -hmm. Red Bull is now saying no to Ferrari despite being partners with them not too long ago. Which means that between this somewhere, teams do know that if you are a customer of a bigger Formula 1 team Mm -hmm. uh, who's also competing, you may not get the best package at all times. And, you know, Red Bull has categorically said that, great, thank you, but... You know, if we take a customer engine, we know it's going to be difficult, even more difficult to win races and championships. Oh, so you basically become a Williams. Yeah. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> yes, very glad you said that. <laughs> but Honor suggested something which, well, I was foreseeing that this would come to Ross Brown being, you know, now the savior of F1. He's been around, he's been an engineer, he's uh, won so many championships. Eight times world champion. Can Eight you imagine? Times. That My is God. just brilliant. That is fantastic. But should he be writing the rules of F1 just like Kristen Horner has been saying? Well, I have immense respect for Ross Brown. I love him. Okay. I want to know what the garden that he's now gardening is has done. I'm sure it is going to win a few awards in any case. <laughs> Maximum yield for per hectare or something that he'll get. But jokes aside, mm. uh, even if Ross Brown is involved in writing the rules or not, I genuinely think they need somebody from a marketing point of view. Somebody who's won marketing innovation awards mm -hmm. to have changed such a dinosaur of a sport mm -hmm. and make it relevant to the 21st century. Okay, but you know, having said that, Christian Honor has also said that Honda and Renault should be allowed to catch up. Now see, I understand where he's coming from because when Red Bull was doing well and they had the double diffuser, nobody turned around and said, you can't make the double diffuser now. You have to like stick to whatever you made in the beginning of the year. And that's not fair. But still, well, what I think is it's not going to be fair for Mercedes because, well, they put their brains and made the, made the engine right in the first place. Yeah, it's a difficult one because mm. the business of the sport and the engagement of the sport, the viewers need equal engines to come. They it can't have so much disparity. But from a sporting point of view, it is just stupid. It's like, you know, telling Usain Bolt, hey, you know what, you uh, you consume a few lesser calories before your 100 meter run because we need Tyson Gay and Justin Gatlin to be closer to you if not be able to beat you that's not that's not too fair i mean let's not go down that route in my view a big round of applause to sara force and f1 both the drivers Ooh. really doing well nico hulkenberg you beauty first the Le Mans win and he actually bought the uh, press conference he bought the trophy to the press conference i love that act imagine <laughs> you're sitting with a vettel and i think there was lewis etc lewis by the way said i don't i don't watch lamar i don't care about lamar fair enough let him say that for now <laughs> imagine you come walk in and you put the big 24 hours of lamar trophy <laughs> for the world to see i think it was a kick-ass move by nico hulkenberg i mean taking the motorsport world by storm and beating a Williams, which was just yes. too good. Very, very crucial. Because if there are driver movements to happen, and I just say this out of personal uh, expectations, I would expect a Botas or a Hulkenberg or maybe a Ricciardo to be in the line of fire. Okay. <laughs> For Nico Hulkenberg to have beaten Botas in Austria, big one. Massive, <laughs> massive one. So... If Mercedes is looking to replace Rosberg, which I believe they should, and I get a lot of flack for it every time I say it. Including from you. Me. Yes. <laughs> I hate you. Yeah. <laughs> but look look at it from Lewis Hamilton's point of view. He will still have a Nico to beat. <laughs> yes, I believe that the seat at Ferrari is, uh, is, is getting extremely available now after Raikkonen's uh, day in and day out uh, Harakiri moves that he does which is just dismal. I, I don't like to see what he does and I'm a big fan. But I, I believe... Do you think he should be replaced? Some my heart says no, but my mind says yes. Good for a change, we agree. Yes, yes. John Eric Wern is is over ah, there, and let's not we forget agree even more so. He is brilliantly talented. He was just neck and neck with Ricciardo back in the day. Yes, so I don't see any reason why he won't excel. It'll be good karma for him if he does that, wouldn't it? It'll be great, and it'll be great to see Vettel being challenged by another yeah. young guy. Yeah, although I really feel somewhere you know there is a Hulkenberg who deserves ah, it as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Maybe for that we'll make space in the Mercedes. <laughs> Button can <car>. always. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. You can't send him to a car which doesn't perform. <laughs> Poor lad. He's always had similar issues, right? We don't know where Formula 1 is heading. We don't know where the points are heading. Who's going to be winning the next race? Nico or Lewis. But we do know one thing. Whatever happens in Formula 1, it will be on our blog, on the Inside Line F1 podcast, and it will be discussed in detail. 20, 20 minutes of detail. Me, 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 but also you. <laughs> the Pharaoh fast forwards his favorite foreign film. Hip, 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 powder donut. <clears throat> okay, what's my line? Uh, the only line I see here on the script is get options based on your budget with the name your price tool from Progressive. Oh man, that's a tongue twister, huh? I'm sorry, I'm gonna need a few more minutes. <clears throat> bulbous Walrus, the Bulbous Walrus. The name your price tool, only from Progressive. The owl and a foul of the comatose Coxwain. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law.